Hi folks, I hope this finds you doing well and staying healthy. I want to show an enhancement to Illuminated Cloud, in particular its support of uh, integrated SQL query execution. Uh, and to be specific, it's to uh, add support for querying tooling APIs objects. Uh, this is something that's been long requested and uh, hopefully as I'll demonstrate, it's been implemented in a very first class, very complete manner. Uh, just a quick aside, for those of you not familiar with tooling APIs objects, uh, in Salesforce, uh, there are really two distinct sets of S objects. There are the ones that you have worked with if you work with Salesforce at all. All the business objects like account, opportunity, uh, user, contract, all your custom S objects, whether you've modeled them or whether they're from installed managed packages. Um, they're really what you think of as being the S objects in your organization. And then there is a completely separate bank of S objects that are available only through something called the tooling API, which as the name implies is an API that is in support of building tools. So IDEs like Illuminated Cloud, CLIs like the Salesforce CLI, CICD systems, whatever it may be. Um, there's an intersection between those two sets of S objects. So things like Apex class and user and permission set, those exist in both, sometimes with slightly different sets of fields, uh, but they each have their own objects. For example, I mentioned the business objects like account and opportunity, uh, uh, custom S objects. Those only exist in this, the kind of normal S objects that are available through the partner API. Uh, and then on the flip side, on the tooling side, you have uh, S objects that are really in support of building tools, things like Apex code coverage aggregate and metadata container. In fact, when Illuminated Cloud uh, deploys via the tooling API, it uses the metadata container S objects in order to do quick deployments uh, uh, of your Apex classes and triggers, your visual force components, things like that. So uh, with that preface out of the way, let's just go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how this works. So we'll just go to the um, SQL query, um, Go ahead and close that. Go to the SQL query tool window, and uh, it looks exactly like you'd expect, and you can execute queries, um, and it will prompt you if you're going to do something that might be inefficient. Uh, it will show you the results. You can look at the results in a hierarchical form or a tabular form, everything you'd expect. Um, but now we'll go ahead and create a new tab and uh, show that by default, that new tab is going to use the same objects you've always used. So if I wanted to select everything from account, you can see account, opportunity, Opportunity, you can see opportunity, that same uh, shopping list object, all those are there as you'd expect. And in fact, if I say shopping list, I can query that. That's the default disposition. But there's a new toolbar button here, use tooling API. And if checked, the first thing you may notice is there's an error that's flagged. It says that tooling API queries must use tooling as object types. Uh, Eliminated Cloud is going to warn you if you have an invalid combination of the API and the S object. So for example, here we're using the tooling API and we're trying to query something not available to the tooling API. If we go up and build a different query, you'll notice that it's changed. It's no longer showing us those S objects we've always queried, but it's showing us objects that are uh, through the tooling API. Now you can see a tooling API namespace. I'll actually talk more about that in a little bit. It's not a real namespace. It's kind of an implementation detail uh, that Illuminated Cloud uses in order to support this feature. But you can see that the offered S objects are tooling API S objects, Apex class member, Apex code coverage aggregate, um, metadata container, things like that are going to show up here. So let's just go ahead and query Apex class member and we can show that we can query that and see the results here uh, in both tabular and in uh, hierarchical forms. Uh, everything's fine. If I turn off this option, you can see that I get a similar error. It's really the converse. Partner API queries cannot use tooling S object types. So again, it's just going to keep you honest on the correct combination of API and S object. And by the way, if you're working with SQL queries in your Apex classes, things like that, uh, and you, for whatever reason, try to use uh, a, a tooling S object, it'll warn you similarly. Um, it will only allow you, to allow you to use those in this SQL query tool window when you have this option enabled. Uh, and you won't even offer code completions for the tooling objects uh, or the tooling API namespace if you're uh, not in one of these tabs that is, is actually selected this way. And another thing about the selection is the same way, and we'll go ahead and rename this, and we'll call this a tooling API query, the same way that the, uh, the various tabs state 
uh, the state of these tabs is preserved across sessions. You can even close the IDE and reopen it. Uh, that is now extended to include this flag. So uh, this tab will be stored with this query against a tooling API S object in the name tooling API query and the, uh, the state that it's supposed to use the tooling API. So, um, so you can have a combination of tooling API queries and uh, partner API S object queries uh, all within the same query tool here stored. Okay, um, so again, you can query this. As I said, you can see it in tree form. This is not a very interesting one because it's flat. It's completely flat. Let's make that a little more interesting. Um, there is another field that we can um, query called symbol table. And so uh, I'm going to take a look at this. And another feature of this, because it is a full first class implementation of queries against the tooling API S objects, is integrated API documentation. So just as with the uh, traditional S objects and the Apex system types and uh, Visual Force and ARA functions and, and global variables and global value providers and things like that, the Salesforce documentation has been integrated. So it's available right here from within the IDE. And uh, it'll be uh, important to note that this is a complex type. What does that mean? Well, the tooling API has several fields that are not strings or not references to other objects, uh, S objects, they are effectively structured information, but you can see that the data type is object. Uh, that structure of that information does not correspond to other tooling API S objects in their fields. Instead, it comes across effectively as a structured blob that is then uh, decoded. And so let's go ahead and query this. So in this case, it'll be a symbol table for an Apex class is going to be the set of uh, of, of member variables and methods and constructors and the signature of the class itself. And we can see that here. So we can see that we have this class and we can see that we can see its methods. We can see the signature of the method, whether it has parameters, we can see where it occurs in the source code. Uh, we can scroll down, we can see various uh, member variables. So you can see all this information about the classes that get queried. And, um, while this may not be useful to someone that's not building, say, an IDE, uh, there are other complex uh, fields in the tooling API, and this should give you a pretty good indication of how that information gets returned and available for visualization uh, using the, uh, the query tool support here for tooling API S objects. So it should be a great way to gain insights into what's going on kind of under the hood inside your organizations, not just with tooling specific objects, but even with something like uh, your coverage. If you want to know more about your code coverage, uh, you can take a look at it. In fact, let's make that a select star on Apex code coverage aggregate, and we can get this information. I mentioned earlier about validation. Um, the same validation rules are going to apply here. In this case, I've set the maximum unconstrained result set size to 100, and it's done a count uh, on this query, a, count, a row count on this query that says it would have surpassed that. So it's prompting me, do you want to go ahead and execute the query? Similar would happen if you had unconstrained subqueries that could result in like a combinatorial explosion of the data that has to be returned or, um, or <clears throat> like blob type fields that would be returned. And so we'll go ahead and let this query execute. And we can see again, kind of a flat list, which is better visualized as a table of this. And then we'll look at one other feature that has always existed, but to show that exists with uh, tooling API queries, and that's polymorphic field support. So as you can imagine, the Apex class or trigger ID points to either an Apex class or an Apex trigger. And so the uh, resolved ID, the object uh, is going to, when you when you try to get code completions on, is gonna show the union set of the fields across the candidate types for that polymorphic field. In this case, Apex class, Apex trigger. Um, so we could put disjoint fields here if we wanted to off of that. We can also put common fields. So if I put name, we can see very clearly that name resolves to Apex class dot name and Apex trigger dot name. And in fact, if I go ahead and run this query, um, I can see that name includes, say, shopping list trigger, which is a trigger, and Apex doc validation test, which is obviously a, uh, an Apex class, a test class. So you can see that things like uh, field polymorphism works, um, uh, complex data structures, you can do subqueries, pretty much everything that you would expect works. Um, so what are some of the details after you upgrade Illuminated Cloud and try to use this feature? Well, let's just go ahead and drill in on Apex code coverage aggregate. And you'll see that as you might've already expected, it is a, uh, a generated stub class in the offline symbol table, just like the other S objects are, just like the Apex system types are. Uh, it, it basically manifests as a stub Apex class that represents that object. 
As I mentioned previously, uh, these all land in the tooling API namespace, which is not a real Salesforce namespace. Uh, it's an illuminated cloud specific synthetic namespace that really acts as a scoping mechanism for tooling S objects. Similarly, all tooling S objects extend this base class, common base class called tooling S object, the same way all standard S objects extend a base class of S object. And uh, because you're not going to be using these from Apex, that's going to be irrelevant. You're never actually going to use it, but it allows uh, the uh, stub apex classes to provide these polymorphic fields with a common base class. So apex class or trigger pointing to tooling S object gives it a common base interface. And then the additional metadata that gets rendered into the offline symbol table says specifically uh, that uh, field is resolvable to either apex class or apex uh, trigger. And then any other uh, polymorphic field will have similar. Again, this is exactly how polymorphic fields work uh, in the standard S objects, uh, just showing that they also work in uh, the tooling API. Uh, the base class name has been swizzled just to prevent any form of ambiguity though. Uh, now, the tooling API namespace did not exist prior to the release that introduces this new feature. So let's move over to another project that doesn't have this and take a look. And you can see that in its uh, offline symbol table, you don't have a tooling API namespace. It would be slotted in between these two namespaces because I haven't regenerated this one uh, since introducing this feature. And in fact, when you started the, when you opened the project, uh, you would have gotten the toaster pop up in the corner saying your uh, module has an out of date offline symbol table specifically because uh, tooling API query support has been added. It says required, what is required? mean? It means that if you want to use that feature, you have to regenerate your offline symbol table. And at that point, you could do so by just clicking resolve and it would regenerate it for you. If you didn't do that, um, then Illuminate Cloud will make sure that you know that that's something that needs to happen. So if we go into the SQL Query tool window and try to turn on tooling API support, it will tell you, uh, for this connection, I can't find the tooling API S objects. You need to regenerate the offline symbol table uh, before you'll be able to use this particular feature, at which point uh, you could regenerate the, the offline symbol table. But the point is, is you don't need to do that uh, for every one of your projects. As soon as you uh, realize you want to query tooling S objects, you would need to do it for that connection. Um, and of course, the next time you regenerate your offline symbol table, it's going to happen automatically, but you can kind of do this lazily as you need. So, uh, so that's it. That's the new feature. Um, simple in one regard, uh, quite uh, sophisticated in another, in that it gives you the ability to inspect uh, data from a whole other API and a whole other set of S objects that provide uh, pretty deep insights into what's going on inside your, your organizations. Um, if you find any issues with this after upgrading, uh, whether it's issues with the new feature, querying the tooling S objects, or issues getting proper code completions or resolution or whatever on traditional S objects, let me know. I'll, I'll take care of it ASAP. Otherwise, um, uh, I hope this uh, makes it so that uh, you can uh, continue to work in Illuminated Cloud when previously you might have had to jump out to developer console to run a tooling API query or, or, or maybe down to the CLI. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I hope everyone stays healthy. Bye.